Do you want to find an interesting tech discussion chat or a teammate to play with? Join our Discord server using the link in the description. We already have reviewed the Xbox Series S technical details in one of the previous videos and touched some PS5 features there, but today we will take a closer look specifically at PS5. Hello and welcome back to Hardware Lab. Cooling system of the console can sound like something not important, however in case of the PS5 it kinda forms of the shape of the whole console specification limitations, so it's very important to overview. The PS5 has a single motherboard with large copy bay heatsink with aluminum fins. Airflow is generated by massive centrifugal fan. This system doesn't look like something space efficient and so it creates some limitations to the hardware TDP. This cooling system structure was chosen because of the single motherboard console structure and multi-radiator construction like in Xbox systems wasn't the option here since Sony wanted to make this futuristic look which requires the structure. You can like or dislike this modern futuristic design but it definitely affected the cooling system and of course to the available power of the hardware. Speaking of which, to keep the system quiet like Xbox and cool enough, Sony used the technique called IMD Smart Shift which was designed for the laptops to keep it manage the power consumption between CPU and GPU and this is how it works. Imagine we have no power limit both on CPU and GPU side, which means both of them can boost to their maximum frequency and consumption. However, of the schooling system cannot be handled this like in PS5, Smart Shift is joining the game. It sets the overall power limit both for GPU and CPU and divides the consumption between those parts based on the load. Presumably the PS5's limit here is 180 watts, so either GPU or CPU or both for a bit lower their frequency and voltage to fit this general 180 watts limit. In practice, it means that the best GPU limited result can be provided only when CPU load is super low or vice versa. And this power management strategy is only applied on PlayStation, neither Series X or X doesn't use anything similar. Of course, these limitations can be expanded in the future, but if it does, Sony couldn't keep the console so quiet. One of the killing features of the PS5 is SSD and memory subsystem in general. This aspect of the device is extremely well designed, but jokes about SSD5 are still fun. So firstly, the SSD compressed speed in PS5 is 5.5GB per second, which is already impressive. Moreover, the compression coefficient is around 1.5 which makes the compressed data speed as high as 8 or 9 gigabytes per second. Especially high speed can be achieved with OODLE compression, since the speed with OODLE gets up to 20 gigabytes per second. Insane numbers, right? But how are they achieved? PS5 has a specialized controller named Kraken. That speed of compression OODLE texture is almost equal to 9 Zen 2 cores. For data distribution between Kraken and all of their past PS5, also has a hardware controller called DMA. Both Kraken and DMA are the parts of input-output complex. If we compare the regular data compression coefficient with what Xbox offer, we will find the Xbox compression coefficient is even higher, but overall the faster SSD in PS5 and Kraken adaptation to work with Oodle are doing the job and showing a lot better speeds than Xbox. However, there are still no clear winner of games loading speeds between PS5 and Xbox Series systems. Depending on the game one is just doing better than another, so it's definitely something strange going on here. Talking of other advantages of high speed SSD in modern consoles, Sony has nothing to answer the Xbox's quick resume, feature that allows to store and turn down games on SSD and switch between them. So the way how Xbox uses this SSD is a bit more advanced even if the speeds are lower. Another part of the IO complex of PS5 is a coherence engine. This thing provides the data to another new hardware element named Scrubbers. These elements are used to supply the clearing the cache command for both L1 and L2 cache buffer to clear the space for useful data. This allows us to get rid of idle resources and manage the cache more properly. 
Presumably, these scrubbers will appear in desktop Arduino 3 GPU, but now they are available only on PlayStation console. So, yeah, while PS5 doesn't have all the Arduino 2 features, it implements some of the Arduino 3 ones. So, what is missing from the desktop Arduino 2, you would ask? Zill 3 cache, direct storage, VRS, mesh shaders. Talking about mesh shaders, PS5 supports the primitive shaders technology and even uses it in some advantage way by having a custom geometry engine. The primitive shaders itself work pretty similar to mesh, but still both Xbox and PCs with Arduino 2 support both the primitive and mesh, while PS5 doesn't. Moreover, PS5 lacks sample feedback support but has some of its optimization tricks. It supports memory data concurrent based on the player's field of view. It means that the data that is required to render objects that you can see are not loading to the RAM. Of course, some code cut systems were present already in the preview gen games, but they'll still store all the unnecessary data in RAM, only saving a render time. For example, Watch Dogs 2 is doing so. Sort of the same thing is happening with cover geometry that is unnecessary to render and even GTA 5 doesn't render that, but the data is still in RAM. PS5 gives the ability to move this data until necessary out of RAM as well. All this stuff is possible just because of using a high-speed SSD. But advanced data provider and memory subsystem are not that important if the actual parts that deal with the data, CPU and GPU, are bad. Of course, in the PS5 they are not. PS5, as well as the Xbox system, has an 8-core Zen 2 CPU, but it is also cut it a bit. The FPU block in the PS5 CPU is closer to what Zen offers than to Zen 2, but those cards are not really important. The GPU side is a bit more interesting. It has 36 CUs and pretty high clock speed in comparison to Xbox, reaching at peak 2230 MHz and using Arduino 2 with the limitation mentioned before. The RAM pool is as big as the Xbox Series X one, 16 GB and has a speed for 148 GB per second. One more topic to discuss is available APIs on PlayStation systems. Since PlayStation can't use DirectX, PS4 was using two different APIs that belongs to Sony, low-level GNM and high-level GNM X, depending on developer choice. Probably they use the same one or develop something new, there are no information about that. Still the important things to notice is that Sony can use the old variation of different techniques we talk about today due to their custom APIs. And moreover, it is possible to use the ray tracing via these APIs and PS5 has a hardware ray tracing unit for that. Talking about sound features may seem a bit boring but the PS5 has some amazing sound technologies as well. Of course, I want to mention Tempus 3D. Tempus 3D processes the sound after the space positioning step. This precision is based on a massive research into people's ears form and sound bouncing inside them. Based on this data, the system can provide the more accurate space-directed sound and simulate up to 5000 different sound directions, each one connected to its own sample. And now I want to talk about general use variability of the PS5 system. The game subscription that Sony offers has nothing to compare with Xbox Game Pass. The backward compatibility works on the PS5, PS2 and PS4, while there are no FPS boosts or any automatic enhancements. Simulator controller choice is limited as well since PS5 supports only controllers approved by Sony and even that DualShock 4 gamepad works only on the PS4 games. There is even no simple web browser on the PS5. Back in the release days, Sony even didn't have their own subscription, didn't support VRR and didn't even support the Quad HD output res. However, this aspect has been fixed and this is a move in the right way. So, it would be nice to see if Sony continue to go beyond their actual limitations, that are not the case on the Xbox consoles. Talking about the gamepad itself, DualSense is a lot more advanced controller than what DualShock 4 was like. Firstly, the trigger system has changed significantly. New system in DualSense implements the feedback on triggers based on trigger's resistance. Players can now feel the different feedback from different objects in the game on them. Vibration system has changed massively as well, since now it's able to simulate vibration of different parts on the controller based on the actual game's content. Traditional vibration system is done by the load with a displaced sense of gravity which spins and strives to break loose. In contrast, the new system uses spring hammer that can vibrate in a few different ways to simulate the positioning. Moving on to gaming, let's check how the PS5 handles some of the hardly demanded titles. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy has three available mods. Ray Tracing, 
quality and performance. Both ray tracing and quality modes are targeted in 4K, while the RT modes, of course, reach the target a lot less often. They both have a locked and stable 30 FPS cap. In comparison to PCs Ultra, ray tracing mode on PS5 have a slightly slower resolution over its reflection and lacks transparency reflections. The performance mode, however, cuts down a lot of settings and works at Full HD, but provides a 60 FPS cap instead of 30. Unstable 60, by the way, with drop to 40. Assassin's Creed Valhalla provides only two available modes, quality and performance. The target resolution here is identical for both modes, 4K, but the performance mod can drop even to Quad HD since it's trying to achieve 60 FPS instead of 30 in quality mode. Surprisingly, PS5 has a better grass density in this game than a max out PC settings, while some other settings stay below Ultra. Far Cry 6 is an example of a not well made PS5 version of the game, since it offers only one mod with a disabled ray tracing effects. The settings are fine, mix of high and ultra from PC, and the resolution target 4K, while actually having some drops. All there at 60 FPS. Almost ok to play, but it would be nice to see the more options include ray tracing or a full native 4K quality mode. The example of a well made game, however, is a Spider Man Miles Morales. There are also three mod features ray tracing quality mode. Ray Tracing Performance Mode and Non-RT Performance Mode. The RT Quality Mode uses a dynamic rest with a target of 4K as well as many other titles. However, the resolution of Ray Tracing Reflection is of course lower. Target frame rate here is at 30 and the spread is stable. The mode that makes RT in this game special is RT Performance Mode, since it combines the 60 FPS experience and the Ray Tracing Reflection effects. Of course, there is a cost in their quality. When the resolution of RT reflection quality mode is somewhere around 1080p, in RT performance they are around 720p. It still looks fine despite not being sharp enough. So I personally think the mod is kind of a success. In case it drops from 16 performance RT, it's still too obvious for you. The game offers a disabled RT mode as well with a perfectly locked 60. Last but not least. There is another example of the well-made 60 FPS ray tracing game on the PS5, Resident Evil Village. I wouldn't mention today than a Spider-Man, but this game features something important as well. Ray tracing GI in ray trace ambient occlusion and yeah, all that at 60 FPS with a checkerboard 4K res. Sure, the game has a non rt mode as well that removes some occasional drops below 60, with no other difference. But from my perspective it's almost pointless to use since PS5 handles pretty stable 60 with nice RT features here. To conclude, I would like to say the PS5 definitely has its own issues. Some strange decisions made while designing the cooling system are not a good sign at all. However, a lot of smart engineering solutions applied to the memory subsystem means that it has some advantages over the Series X console which makes the choice between the platforms not that obvious. In general, the GPU and CPU side and the whole hardware complex using PS5 is really strong and it can handle latest games with all the modern rendering techniques really well. A lot better than a PS4 back in the day. For myself, I prefer the Series X console and I'm currently gaming on that since the main components of it look a bit stronger and with a game pass and other different feature I can pay less and get more from gaming perspective. Let me know guys which system do you prefer in the comment section, but please do it politely. If you want to share feedback or discuss something with us in general, welcome to our discord server, the link is in the description as usual. And that's it for today, stay up to date with HL.